Good morning everybody. Welcome back to my channel. It's Di and I have been playing around with a peeled paint technique. Right, why you ask? Why would you need a peeled paint technique? I wanted to put this in my journal. You, uh, I love putting gates and doors in my journal and I got these in, in some, I bought them actually off a, off a lady and they are from Manor House Creations. I think they're quite old. They were in her stash for a long time and she sold them. They're in uh, South Maruta, New South Wales, 38 Pacific Park Drive, www.manorhousecreations.com. Anyway, that's so that you can source them. That's what they look like. I've got two in the pack. And I've cut, as you can see, I've cut one post off here and I've used walnut stain distress uh, spray stain and I've turned it into a darker color and so far I have got white acrylic paint on there but you could layer that up with different colors because it's going to be in my journal it's going to be a garden gate so I thought it would be worthwhile showing you uh, how I did this and to see if you could use it in your own projects. So let's get started, shall we? You will need, now not very much, you just need whatever little chipboard that you're going to work on. And I've found some other little pieces that we can play with to, to have a go. Um, you're going to need just wax paper, just ordinary waxy paper. Three acrylic paints. Um, I think you, you should have white, I think. And I'm going to try a nice blue. It's like a turquoisey blue, but I've colored that down a little bit. And I've got a burnt umber, which is a nice brown. Uh, so I don't know whether I'll use the brown, but I've got three ready to go. Now, to make it stick, you're going to need a clear varnish. Now, the varnish acts as the uh, glue and, he and adhesive. So, I did, the first lot I did, this one, I stained it with walnut stain first, wiped that off, let it dry, then I added little pieces of my glue which I've been thinking about it now I think you could use Mod Podge I used I, I used like an acrylic extender a liquefying medium this is called but this for airbrushing paint um, but clear varnish is great you can buy them where you buy all your acrylic paints and you usually uh, just pop a little bit because it extends the life as you know of your paint without taking the color out if you don't have that, uh, I'm thinking a clear gesso would be ideal, or the Mod Podge. If you don't have any of those things, have a little play around with little bits of PVA, or no, probably a tacky glue, because you want it to go tacky. Because what we're going to do is we're going to paint a thin layer of Vaseline down. I've got a little pot. I've just put some Vaseline into a nice little jar. I'm hoping the lighting in here is okay. And I've got a nice old brush. And what I've done is I've taken my wax paper, but because the Vaseline's clear, I thought oh, I'll just grab a Sharpie and make some boxes on the back so that um, just draw some boxes about the same size as my gate so that I know where the Vaseline is. I thought that was really clever. <laughs> Just a little tip there. Okay, so the trick is here to get your Vaseline and we're going to paint it all over this wax paper in the, in the, on the size we want. But the trick is to do a thin layer not too thick 
because what it's doing it will act as a resist also but this allows you to peel all of this up easily too so it does a couple of things the good old Vaseline yeah so I've got a really old brush it's not very absorbent and it's it's really good for this so I'll just do it on two boxes we'll just do white paint and blue paint So this is just really really it's amazing you will love this I don't know if any of you are into miniatures um, but you know like if you're into miniature villages and things like this this would be fantastic okay now we need a paintbrush and I'm going to put the white down here it says to let it dry for a couple of hours but I didn't have a couple of hours to play with yesterday. Well, actually, into the late night last night. So I grabbed my heat tool and dried it. And that worked fine. So you can see I'm putting the white paint down now on top of the Vaseline. Now, I don't know if this, I don't know if this should be thick, to be honest with you, or thin. But I'm just doing... A nice layer and hopefully not too thick not too thin right so we've done that not oh, wrong lid Now I'm going to do the same on the other side, but this time with some blue. Yeah, so we paint this on and we let it room dry or we or we dry it. So that was quick and easy, wasn't it? Right, pop that in water. And set that aside to dry. Right, step one done. Now we need to take our piece and we need to decide. I, I don't want to leave it this color and if I stain it and I don't like it I can always as you would a piece of real wood you would uh, then um, paint straight over it I could take my uh, vintage photo and just dob it on with a dobber and color this chipboard actually I I don't know if this is technically chipboard this is really really fine very very thin fine wood I'm pretty sure that's wood okay so let's have a look at the steps Paint a thin layer of Vaseline onto the wax paper, done, allowed to dry, and I've made a note here, I dried it with a heat tool. Prepare the chipboard um, that I wanted to look old and rough it up with scratches or sandpaper and stain it. So what I, what I did to uh, rough it up, well, I just took my pointy ended scissors and I just went along the grain like so and that way you can be careful what you take off I mean these are thin and you can gouge some make some ridges and I think that'll help the paint stick to it as well and then you can take your sandpaper anything to make it look authentic always going down with the grain of the fence
because after all mine is a garden gate and it's been out in the weather for a long time and it's been painted and the paint's peeled off in the sun and then someone's come along and painted it with a different colour paint whatever they had laying around and um, I'm doing a journal and it's uh, kind of like the secret garden every garden needs a gate especially an old English country garden with an old English cottage okay so I'm not going to take sandpaper to that because sandpaper will smooth it up if it's too fine and I think that's done a pretty good job so I'm going to just wipe the, the dust off it and I will stain it I mean this is so easy really what I'll do is I'll get some some paper towel I think Isn't that interesting? You can see there there's been a resist of something on there. And then soak that up. Look at that, that's amazing. And then just turn it over and hopefully No, we're going to have to spray again. Oh, well, never mind. It's handy to do both sides because um, I, I just turned the gate around different ways and if you're going to all this, well, it's not all this effort, but if you're going to go to the effort, do both sides, I reckon. There, that takes it down really good. And then I can pop that down there, throw that away. I'll just grab my heat tool and I'll be back in a sec. Right, so there we have. Right, so there we have the garden gate stained and nicely roughened up a little bit, which is really good. Okay, both sides done. Right, so that's the garden gate. Now, the next step is to get a little bit of whatever you're going to use as your varnish. So, I am going to try, because I did the liquefying medium last night, I'm going to try a little bit of gesso. I'm just going to two drops down on a plate and we're going to take a very fine paintbrush with a really fine nib and I'm going to put it in the gesso and then I'm going to paint where I want where I want my paint to stick. So, let's see. I'm trying to, in my mind, I'm trying to imagine um, what it might look like. what an actual garden gate might, where it might wear is what I'm trying to get out. Where the paint might be good and where it might not be good. And as you can see, I'm painting it on in globules so that it's got time enough by the time I'm finished doing this
it'll be tacky. And then all we do is place it face down on those dried painted patches we did a minute ago, one at a time. We'll do the same process in between each colour. I'm gonna I'm gonna have most of the paint, I think, coming off. And if you do not like this, sand it back, take it back to raw wood, easy peasy, and um, paint it again, do something different. That's the beauty of these little, I think they're made out of balsa wood, they're very, very light. And uh, I'm going to have this gate on my spine of my journal. So I'm excited actually, I can't wait, it's going to be kind of like a 3D effect, which um, yeah, just came to me. <laughs> oh. Okay, so when that is done, we are then going to place this face down, and here's one I prepared earlier. So then all we do is take that down, it should be nice and tacky, but not dry obviously, and just pop it straight down there, and that leave that there for 40 minutes. I've just got a little glass paperweight, this is amazing, I use this all the time, it's nice and a good weight. I'll just sit that on the top, I think. And then walk away and come back in 40 minutes. Okay, welcome back. Let's do, this is uh, three that I've just put um, the heat tool over on a very far away so that we could just do this process a little bit, a little bit quicker. The other gate's still drying in real time over there. So we can't, we can't peel it off just yet. It's got to wait. Right, now let's try one of these. Let's put them on the brown to dry. They haven't been walnut stained either. Right. Actually, okay, welcome back. I'm just bringing you back to the one I did last night, and that was white acrylic. I actually went over that with my with my um, sponge dauber with a little bit of vintage photo, just to make it look aged more and make it yellowy. So now I'm going to try the blue. Now we've got a patch of blue here that looks dry. So I'm going to use uh, my varnish because this one I used with the varnish or the paint extender. And so I'm going to just be mindful of where I, of where I put it. And I mean, this is the first time that I've actually um, been playing around with this technique. So 
if I don't like the outcome, I will take it off and have another go. I think the blue will give it some um, authenticity too, I really do. I mean, some I'm going to leave bare wood because it's a really, <laughs> this has been really, this poor old gate, it's been here many, many moons and no one's given it any love at all, I don't reckon. Right, now that I've done that, I'm now going to put this piece down on the blue and we're going to wait 45 minutes. So we'll come back and then we'll peel it off together and you can see what happened. Welcome back. Now, where was I up to? I can't remember. Let's have a look at... Aha. Uh -huh. Now, I've been gone over an hour. So this was the old piece that already had the flakes of white on it. So let's have a look. I'm going to... Oh, look at that. Looky, looky, looky. Interesting. Okay. Right. So that is what we have. So I'm going to just take my pokey tool and um, clean it up a little bit. As you can see, it's very easy and even looks, it even looks more authentic. It's very stringy. It's not good weather where I am. We're still, we're still in flood warnings. It's still raining a lot. Humidity is 100%. And, um, yeah. So the paint does not behave well in high humidity areas, as you know. Right. I'm not all that fussed with with this with this one. I think it's a bit too stringy. However, I think we can play with it and make it work. You've got to admit that looks pretty realistic for a little garden gate. I'm quite happy with that. And as I, as I said, you know, I think I've said quite a few times, um, if, if you're not happy with that, well, sand it, sand it off and away you go. But that is my peeled paint technique. Right, now, we had these pieces which we played around with um, gesso. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Whoops. They're they're very they're very stringy. Yesterday when I took it off. Oh, you see how stringy you see how stringy that is. But by by pulling that off depending on what piece you're doing and on what application and how artistic um, you know you might be you might be happy with that look so I didn't like that I didn't like that at all but I've got a sneaking suspicion that 
it is best if you use clear varnish. So that was gesso. We haven't used Mod Podge. Um, now this was the gate. Oh, what am I doing? Let's pull it off nice. Oh, yes. That was the gate we stained. Oh, I love it. That is really good. Now I'll just add white to that and um, put it down again. Now, did I use gesso on this? I don't know. Hmm. Now, the other thing I, I think you can do is, I haven't really tried this, but I think you can splatter, splatter some water on. For a different look. Um, this was the varnish. This was the varnish. So I'm going to go, going to go over this. And by leaving the other side just stained, I mean, I'm doing all of this now because I want you to, to see the different effects. But by leaving the other side plain, I have an option, like this will go in my stash now. And if I need another gate with peeling paint, I can use it on one side. And if not, I can uh, use it on the other. So I'm going to put it down on this piece of white and I'm going to just weight it a little bit and we'll see what happens. I'm wondering if I went away and left that too long because 30 minutes really should be enough, I would have thought. Um, Actually, I've got some blue and some white here. So I'll put some clear varnish onto these wood pieces. Let's see if we can rescue these. I mean, they'll just yeah, I don't, I don't know even what these are for. I suppose there's some kind of spool or wood piece. I'm not sure, um, like a cog. But they were, but they were in my stash, and um, thought yeah, for us to play around with. But it was the fence that's the most important thing. Okay. Oh, it was another post. Oh, here it is. Right, so there's the completed piece. And after a little bit of a sand, I'm really, I'm really, really, really happy with that. Um, but it's also dark on the other side. So when I come to do my um, journal spine, um, I can toast clean that up if I don't want the peel paint effect. But I could also add that burnt umber too later on. So I'm really hoping that you loved the peeled paint technique. Um, I watched a tutorial from Jeff. I'll link him um, below 
and he was an absolute master I don't know what Jeff does um, but I've subscribed to his channel and I'm going to check him out because um, he explained it so much better than I have I'm just hoping that it'll be of some interest and something to play around with so thank you everybody for watching and um, if you want to do a, a screenshot well you might have to do it in two the peeled paint technique you'll be able to stop it and take a screenshot and hopefully it all makes sense Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next fun adventure. Bye for now. See ya.